Hi, my name is Inma and I'm an artist. Well, I think it happened probably when I was in high school, I had, um, had a teacher that she was very inspirational. I think she, she asked us uh, to, to create um, a piece of art, uh, completely creative, random, using whatever materials we wanted to use. Um, that experience was really fulfilling. It was, um, I, it was the first time that I was asked to express myself through uh, something plastic and visual, something um, doing a bit of re uh, investigation re uh, research, but also something meaningful for myself and not even maybe for anyone else, but just for myself. And that was very fulfilling. And from that, I was, I think I was 14. Um, I started being interested in other artists and how do they create, um, what is their creative process. It's, it was a, uh, that's, that's when everything started, I guess. This, is, this one is one of the stages of this one. So yeah. this one was uh, in the Society of Women Artists uh, exhibition this year, okay. in, uh, in the mall, it's, it's close to Buckingham Palace. It's a very, very important gallery. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the stages, and, and here I am calculating the different steps that I have to take. Oh. So it's, it's like a project, project planning, mm -hmm. definitely. And this one, you see, yeah. that is that one. Mm -hmm. It's one of the interim stages. You see that the, 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 the face changes a lot when I add the shadows. Mm -hmm. And the shadows are added by adding uh, like a dust. And mm -hmm. then with that dust and a stop-out varnish, you put it in the acid at different times, depending on how dark you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how it creates uh, those shadows. You say, this is a, I, I take notes of uh, what mm -hmm. I have to do. Well, I think that, well, many times we've been asked uh, what is art and what is not art. Uh, I don't think no one has an answer for that, like a universal answer that says art is this. Um, I think that um, art is an expression of the soul and you can, um, you can have that expression through, um, through photography as well. Uh, obviously, artists, some artists like myself, we find uh, the process almost more interesting than the result and the process is where your soul is, is, uh, is exposed, is, uh, it's out there it's, uh, you start getting like, a, like pieces of your soul putting on that piece of art when the, the piece of art uh, is done with your hands and it, it requires some time to develop it it's, your soul is there like for longer let's say so I think it's more elaborated, more full of meaning and emotions. Well, my art is all about emotions, so that's why I, I, I say this. If my art was just replicating what I see for the sake of it, like there are some paintings that are hyper-realistic paintings, and they find uh, fulfillment in that, in creating something that is, is extremely like the reality. I find fulfillment in creating something that um, inspires an emotion to myself and also to the viewer. That's why I think that Current um, digital photography, because it's just a snap, it's a bit difficult um, to, to show that soul that comes with it, because it's in a moment. But um, having said that, I think it's possible. Yeah. Uh, there are some street photography that is very interesting. Right. Um, some friends of mine, photographers, are, do things that have a soul, because they're capable of catching that moment. Um, and also, analogic photography has so much uh, uh, so many nuances and, and, and subtleties to a, f a photography that it makes it completely a piece of art. It wow. takes time to create something that shows what you want to show. So, yeah. The difference when I take a photo with an um, analog camera and um, a digital camera, well, let's say uh, a phone camera. Because a digital camera can have so many, uh, so much input into the creativity and the type of photography that you can uh, you can make. Um, but the, the beauty of analog is uh, is this, is similar to the beauty of um, doing an etching print. Basically, 
the materials and also doing when you do pastels, when you do acrylics, oils. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not the first one to say this. This uh, I think it was Kand Kandinsky uh, had an um, entire essay talking about the materials have their own personality. Um, and the materials uh, in a camera is the light, is the film. So they have their own personality. Uh, you could be a very good photographer and trying to control everything, but at the end of the process, there is something random that happens that makes it beautiful. At least for me and for many artists, I think this is uh, the beauty of uh, doing art, is uh, trying to control uh, the maximum what you have in your hands, but letting it have its own personality, its own character, and let's see what happens. And, and those uh, random accidents, making the most of that, because I think that's when they come to life. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I'm doing a, a painting, um, at the beginning, uh, you try, you, you do the first uh, uh, blocking the colors, the first shadows. Yes, it's fine. You're trying to control and get into it like, a, like in, in a cage. But at some stage, they come to life. So there is something that you add to the painting and then they start having their own personality. And sometimes it, it's the materials. And with an analog uh, photography, uh, the light has its own input there. So I think this is what makes them uh, more beautiful and more interesting than maybe when you take a photo from, uh, with, a, with, a, with a mobile. It's just a snap of the reality. And it's usually quite flat and there is no much uh, beauty in it, I think. So, yeah, this is my, my opinion. Well, these are etchings. Um, I use a copper plate. Um, the copper plate is uh, treated with a uh, wax that, uh, cover, that protects it. It's, mm -hmm. it's called a stop out varnish. Okay. Um, actually, it's called um, wax for hard ground. There are two types hard ground and soft ground. The hard ground creates the harsh line, mm -hmm. and the soft ground creates uh, all the texture at the back. Okay. So what happens is that um, once you have the idea that you want to, what you want to produce, you cover the plate and then you remove that wax, whatever you want, a line. Right. Okay. And then you put it in an acid, and the acid bites the metal. Right. Okay. Wherever you have removed the wax, mm -hmm. then um, once you have that, you add ink, and then you put it through a press with damp paper. Okay. And it's always, it always uh, works in negative. So right. it's like the opposite. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's a uh, yeah. You put the paper on top, so it's the other way. And also um, something to keep in mind: the different uh, grades of uh, shadings of uh, gray. Uh -huh. uh, that is a different um, a different uh, material that you add to the plate, and then you put it on the on the acid at different times depending on. Uh, how dark you want it, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you have to work backwards. Right, right. Because you have to uh, leave exposed to the acid um, for longer the darker pieces. So you start covering up the uh -huh. things that you want lighter yes, yes. from the beginning to the end. So I say it requires planning, uh, right. a lot of planning. Okay. But also the beauty of this, because it sounds like a very uh, manual or very um, organized process. And that is not very artistic and it's not very emotional. It's more crafty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the beauty of this is that um, you might have an idea that you want to represent. Uh, and then later on, because the materials have their own personality, they show up. So right, okay. no matter what you want to do, when you lift the paper of the plate, different. you might get something <laughs> a bit different. And something that that's has its yeah. own personality. And that's, that's the beauty of it. This is, for instance, this one, this shape here. Yeah. There's like a like a worm or something like that. Okay. I didn't plan that to happen, but right. I love it. So happy accident. Yeah, exactly. So as soon as it happens, you just keep it there and you make the most of it. Yeah. It's beautiful analog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, um, if you really want to control it, there are ways. Okay. So you, there are some tools that you can use to varnish the plate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and remove some uh, some scratches. Mm -hmm. But I don't want. I don't want it. I want. I want, want it to as work. nature intended. Exactly. It's like analogy. Yeah. Oh, thank you.